Today, NASA will attempt a historic land grab. Yeah, the spacecraft OSIRIS-REx will touch down on an asteroid, and NASA's Mark Clampin joins us live to talk about this exciting mission this morning. Good morning, and thanks a lot for joining us. Good to see you. Good morning. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right, so tell us what's going to happen today. So today, uh, NASA's uh, OSIRIS-REx mission will attempt to collect a sample, as you said, from this asteroid we call Bennu, which is about 200 million miles away. So this afternoon, we'll start firing thrusters on our spacecraft, and that will allow us to leave the current orbit where we've been mapping the surface of Bennu. And about, it will take four hours on a downward trajectory, and then we'll perform a second thruster uh, firing to maneuver into a steeper descent. And about 11 minutes later, we'll do our final thruster burn uh, called a match point burn. And this allows us to slow the descent and then uh, match the rotation of the asteroid. And that means that then the spacecraft can just descend down to the surface where it will touch for about 16 seconds and collect this sample of asteroid material. And the way it does that is by firing nitrogen gas into the robotic uh, collector or, or the collector head on our robotic arm. And that forces material into the collector. So once we've uh, collected some material in about 16 seconds, we fire the spacecraft thrusters and then we can back away. And then the, the uh, sample that we collect will be returned to us uh, in 2023. Oh, wow. So Mark, tell us how tricky today's maneuver is and how are you handling it? Is it people in Houston who are doing the controls, manning it? So uh, the control is actually being, um, it's being controlled from um, where I am here in Littleton, Colorado at Lockheed Martin. And the um, actual control of the spacecraft as it does its maneuver is completely autonomous. So when we first uh, launched the Cyrus-Rex, we thought the Bennu, Bennu surface, this asteroid will be smooth and you know, sort of beach-like. Turns out that it's extremely rugged and rocky and it's more of a sort of big rubble pile. Hmm. So that means that we actually have to be very careful as we approach the surface because the area that we selected for our sample collection, which has a lot of small particles, is surrounded by these big rocks that are around the size of buildings in some cases. Wow. So our spacecraft has a lot of um, software that allows it to sort of match where it thinks these boulders are as it descends, and that allows us to keep the spacecraft safe. So to put it in context, what we're trying to do is a sort of touch and go sample collection by maneuvering the spacecraft into a space about the size of a couple of car parking slots. You know, it's very challenging, Ooh, but exciting. Wow. All right, so what happens if you're not able to collect a sample today? So if we don't collect the sample today, there are two options, if, depending on where we are bought. So if the spacecraft software, for some reason, aborts above the match point burn, then we can come back to this same landing site in December. If instead the spacecraft sees an unexpected hazard in the form of a rock or something, um, when it uh, is almost at the point of collecting the sample, then we'll collect, um, collect a sample at a different site called Osprey next January because, you know, once we fire those thrusters, if we're very low, it really makes a mess of the you know, collection site. And Mark, what do you hope to learn from this? What do asteroids teach us about the origins of our solar system? Could it tell us whether life exists elsewhere? So, so asteroids are really remnants from the early solar system and the material in them is pristine. It hasn't been processed like the material on our planets. So it really allows us to look back and really understand the, uh, what the solar system composition was like as the solar system formed. And it allows us to ask questions about, you know, the chemical building blocks that jumpstart life, you know, the how the organic material gets transported within the solar system as it but first forms and then evolves. So it will also tell us about what Mars and Venus might have um, looked like in the past as well. So it, it's going to give us a lot of information about how our solar system uh, evolved over time. All right, Mark, before you go, I just want to quiz Suzanne to make sure she was paying attention. How long will it take to collect the material on the ground? And when will the samples be returned? 16 seconds. 16 seconds is right. 2023. 2023, you got it. Mark. You got it. Up, Mark, can I join NASA now? I want to join the team. Mark. Okay. All right, thank you, man. Good to see you. Wow. Thanks, Mark.
Fist you know, bump, air fist bump. Can I tell you how I got into it? By the oh. way, Mark's still with us. I started watching Away on Netflix. Oh, there he went. Oh, and